opportunities. We have a volunteer coordinator who sets people up um, based on their skill set and like what they're looking for. Because not everybody wants to clean barns. Not everybody's comfortable doing like some of the care that we have to do. And actually, none of our care is done by volunteers. But most people that come to volunteer, you know, are doing like projects with the animals too on the shelter. But not everybody wants to do that or feels physically like they can, because this is not an easy job. Um, so there's a million opportunities, and you should reach out um, to our volunteer coordinator, and all of that is online. So can you talk about uh, some of the quirks that our animals have, like why some might like enjoy playing hay theater or anything else? We've got some quirky animals. Uh, animals like people are very quirky. Yeah, uh, so everybody's very quirky in here. Jordan's one of the quirkier ones. Uh, but we have a group, and I know everybody panics about this. We ha Jennifer used to do it, but a lot of the sheep can actually, um, goats, I mean, can actually get in the feeder because they just jump in and then they lay there. And they'll lay there for a good eight hours eating. And it's not that they're stuck, they're just, that's what they want to do. Uh, we have a group of goats, Cynthia is a prime example, the La Mancha goats that don't have ears. They all stand up to eat, so a lot of times you'll see like animals standing to eat. Goats actually, by their very nature, are browsers. They are not grazers. So they're actually designed to stand up on their back legs and eat trees and leaves and cactus and anything, bark off trees. Um, they actually survive in almost any weather because they can survive off of <laughs> almost anything. Hello, Jordan. Jordan has this weird perk of rolling his lips. <laughs> it's the Fleming response. Um, that's another way for them to smell something that smells weird. I hope it's not me. Uh, <laughs> so they all have quirks and they all have different personality traits. A lot of these animals are really, really, really fun. Um, and a lot of them are very, very shy. They're just like people. They're introverts, extroverts, and they all have things that they do. Um, these, this is Claire, actually. I didn't know it was Claire, but this is Claire. Um, and Claire and Sarah both have this thing where they jump really high in the air when they're happy. Some of them are too heavy to do that. <laughs> um, Francis has a quirk. He likes to come up and just like make sure that you see him at all times. And he's very good at coming up. He has specific people that he comes to. And everybody else he kind of ignores. Brian does this. This is a quirk, leaning your head on somebody. Um, so they all have different things that they do. Um, so we have some people that are very, very proud and grateful for the work that you do. And want to know like, what inspires you to do this. What inspires me? <laughs> now, animals are really amazing. Um, I just feel very privileged to do this work. I think, you know, once you get to know them, it is just impossible not to fall madly in love with them. Um, sheep and goats and chickens and cows, they're no different intelligence-wise, they're no different in any way than your cats and your dogs and animals that you bring into your home. Um, and I just think that like they, they, there's something about them that is so healing. So I think a lot of the people that come to the sanctuary to work, including myself, kind of come here almost as a place to heal yourself. Um, animals allow, they, they love you. And they want your attention and they, they appreciate and they are very grateful for everything you do. So I think a lot of people that come to visit, a lot of people that work here, just people in general that need a place where they can feel healed and happy this is a good place to be. Um, so as much as the work is exhaustingly hard and can be very emotional, I can't imagine doing anything else. So I think I was inspired to do this because I felt just an absolute love of animals, but then meeting these animals, um, like the animals that are used in the food industry, just kind of strengthen that bond that I have with them. Right, Lynn? <laughs> so people are really loving the current views that we have, and they're wondering, like, will there be a time that we can see more? Like, can we see the sheep out on pasture or a view of the caves? Okay, it's, um, the Explorer people have put camera, um, cameras everywhere, <laughs> so we're going to have lots of cameras. They're not all set up yet because we have some crazy weather here. Um, in the spring, we have torrential downpours, and we have mud, and right now we have mud. So there's only certain times of the year where they can run cable and do all the things that they need to set up these cameras. But there will be cameras on the pasture, which is really awesome because there's a lot of play out on the pastures. Um, the cattle pasture is one of my favorite places on earth. You'll be able to see that. Uh, we, the cows actually eat as far up in the trees as they can, so they kind of like make everything look nice and level, and they pull apples out of the trees and everything. Uh, you're going to see the chickens running around. There's going to be a pig cam. So you're going to get a really great experience coming up very soon. 
I know there's going to be one in the turkey barn. The turkeys are a riot. If you've ever seen a turkey run, you'll know what I mean. Right, Francis? <laughs> so there's going to be so much more. So we're really excited that people are going to be able to see, you know, what we get to see every single day. Uh, somebody wants to know if you could explain the backstory of the Wisconsin capture. Why has that name? Okay, so we want to change that name because people think the actual camera is in Wisconsin, but the Wisconsin pasture is called that because the animals that originally were in there, and they're still there, um, were animals from a rescue that we did in Wisconsin. Um, and it's, it's a typical, sadly, I gotta get up, it's a typical rescue where um, the reason that they actually went in was it was a farm where the animals were not receiving care. There were over 100 dead goats on that farm. Uh, and we took the remaining sheep and goats from that rescue, and that's the barn that they lived in. Um, and they were feral, so catching those goats was not funny at all. It was very, very difficult. They were very strong and scared. And it, it was amazing that they calmed down as much as they did. So the ones that you see now, and we were actually out this morning because one of them's having a hard time. All of those goats in that barn are CAE positive, so that's the caprine arthritic encephalitis. Um, so they all have arthritis issues, but they are also 14 years old this year. So this is an older group, uh, and the reason we have all of them, we had to keep that whole rescue because of the diseases that they carry. So we had homes lined up for all of them and ended up having to keep them. So they got their own barn called the Wisconsin Barn. Do you need a tent to land? <laughs> People are wondering if humans can catch diseases from the animals. There are a lot of zoonoses um, that you can get from the animals. These are not those. Um, you cannot get caprine arthritic encephalitis, thank goodness. Uh, what? No. <laughs> I'm still here. No, there, they, there are. And you, with any animal, you really obviously need to understand what diseases you can get. Um, one of the things that we warn so many people about, and so many people want to come in and like play with our calves the day we get them, a lot of them come in with cryptosporidium, they come in with giardia, these are all things that are very easy for people to catch, especially children or people that have weakened immune systems. So we're very careful about allowing people in with animals that have disease. Ringworm, they come in with ringworm. You can definitely get ringworm. Um, thankfully, the diseases that this group has and the diseases where anywhere we allow people in, there is nothing that they can get that's contagious. If, these, if this whole group got ringworm all of a sudden, this barn would be quarantined from humans and we'd all have to wear, we'd all have to wear um, special clothing and gloves if we were gonna be in here touching them. Um, so we take every precaution with disease, especially because we have so many guests coming in and a lot of children. Uh, 